Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're taking a look at energy transfer in the atmosphere and hydrosphere. Now before watching this video, please watch the video on thermal energy transfer. If you haven't yet seen it, I'll put a link in the description box below for you. Now this picture here is actually showing a convection current. Um, this ha has an effect on why living near the water is a little bit warmer in the winter and a little bit cooler in the summer. Now we're not going to go into great detail about that, but on the video on local climates you'll learn a little bit more about these convection currents and how it's keeping our temperature a little bit more moderate if we're near water. So here are our learning goals for today. You should be able to describe a convection current. You should be able to describe the wind patterns and the factors that affect them, and describe thermohaline circulation and the factors that affect it. So first of all, what are convection currents? Well, they occur in fluids, so those are liquids or gases. So when it relates to the, and the Earth's climate system, we're talking about in the water and in the air. So those are our two main uh, areas for convection currents. And what happens is that warm fluids, so the warm air, the warm water rises, and then the cool air, the cool water falls. And so you end up getting this sort of circuit. With the warm fluid rising, it gets pushed to the side. As no more warm fluid rises, it gets displaced. And then as it cools down, it falls. And then once it's fallen, there's more cool fluid falling on top of it, displacing it to the side again, and then it'll warm up and rise. So you end up getting a circle of whether it's water or whether it's air, you end up getting this sort of circular pattern. So here's an example of how that would affect us on Earth. We've got sun that's going right directly at the equator in this picture. And First of all, you're going to have hot air that's rising at that location. It's getting hot. Hot air rises, so it's going to come straight up. Now, that air is going to start getting displaced sideways because it can't just keep rising indefinitely, so it starts getting displaced sideways. And then eventually the air starts cooling because the sun is not hitting it as directly, and it falls back down to Earth. Once it's fallen, it gets displaced sideways again and then it gets heated up by the sun and continues to rise, displace, fall, rise, displace, fall. And it ends up getting these cells all the way around the Earth, just caused by the Earth's sun hitting, or the, the sunlight from the sunlight hitting the Earth, causing the air to rise, get displaced sideways, cool down and fall, get displaced sideways, and then get heated up again and rise. So this is what it looks like. You have all these different cells around the Earth. Um, the rising air, you're going to have two cells beside each other with rising air beside each other. And the falling air is going to be beside each other for two cells as well. So you're never going to have a cell with rising air on this side and falling air right beside that. That doesn't happen. The air rises together and then it falls together on the other side. Now, there's some other things happening here as well. So uh, we've mentioned all of these ones. Actually, uh, rising air produces low air pressure because the air is rising, there's very low pressure beneath it. And then falling air produces high air pressure because of all that air that's coming down on top of it. So on top of these patterns, we have something called the Coriolis effect. So if we look here, if you can imagine this little black marble is being put on a glass plate that has an orange dot. If you're looking straight from above, which is the top picture, if the plate is being rotated as the marble falls, you can see that the marble in the top picture there is just falling straight down. So the orange circle has rotated just because the dish that the marble is on, has uh, the dish itself has rotated, but the marble is falling in a straight direction. If you look at the lower picture, this is what would happen if you look at the marble from the side as the dish rotates. It looks like the marble actually does a little sort of circuit as it goes around. We know from looking above that it's going in a straight line, but because the dish is rotating, it looks like the marble is doing a sort of um, a little swirl effect. And that's what happens on Earth as well with our winds. So because the Earth is spinning, when we get these wind patterns, they're going to sort of form almost like little coils. So instead of having just our, our uh, convection current effects, we also get these winds because of the fact that the Earth is spinning. So air flowing from north or south appears to twist rather than flowing in a straight line. And so you end up with these winds called the polar easterlies, the westerlies, and the trade winds. 
And then finally we get to our thermohaline circulation. So this is with our water. Um, this is this big pattern of, uh, of water current that goes through the earth and it has to do with the temperature of the water and the salinity which is the saltiness of the water and that affects how the current moves throughout the earth. So first of all warm water flows from the equator towards the poles. As it moves towards the poles it gets colder and it also gets saltier and then this will make it sink. So the cold water will sink and then now it's going to move from the poles back down to the equator at a lower level because it's sunk. Once it gets to the equator it warms up again, rises and then it'll go back towards the poles. And then on top of that we also have some other things happening. There are the winds that we've already talked about that cause surface currents and then the land masses. So depending on where the different continents are that causes the patterns to change as well because obviously the water is not just going to go right over the land. It needs to go around. So here are learning goals again. You should be able to describe a convection current. You should be able to describe the wind patterns and the factors that affect them and describe the thermohaline circulation and the, factor, the factors that affect it. If you can do all these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video and if you still have questions, ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.